ask someone to help. Any more? Uh, prone, yes. Okay, just uh, the same position with uh, cervical. You want shoulders up, okay? Because so, I want to try to, um, I'm going to feel for her, her first rib. Uh, so I want that upper trap on slack. Um, otherwise, it's going to change how that feels. You know, as it's we right said we lots of times, you know, make sure the person's comfortable. Um, if someone, you know, with some patients, you, they'll have shoulder issues. This may not be a comfortable position, so you may have to, you know, have them go down or put their arms down. But you want to make sure it's comfortable. But if they can tolerate this is kind of the position you want them. So to clear, you're gonna you're gonna you know go through your your cervical palpation with centrals and unilaterals. Okay. So I would start at C2 and work your way down. Okay. But for this purpose. Where you can start here is around C7, T1, and you're going to start your, your sweep of twos. Kind of same grip with uh, the cervical spine. Kind of soften up the soft tissue. And then you're just going to go through each level. Now here, you know, with sweep of twos on the thoracic, it's such, you know, it's so superficial that, you know, practically touching bone and R1 is, you know, Short of that, so it's it's you know it's going to be quite quite gentle, and you're going to it's so stiff you're going to get you know to R1 so quickly. Um, so with centrals, and then you're going to go a little bit deeper, checking. How you doing? Doing okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so as soon as I probably get to like T3, T4 area, I will start to use my hypothenar. And same thing with uh, that we did with the lumbar spine and doing PAs that way. So she's nice and stiff here. Really stiff. Four. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if her symptoms were kind of in the right scap, you know, it might come all the way down to probably, oh, T7, T8 area. Um, because that's where, when we're dealing with the upper quarter, is that T1 to T6 can cause referred pain into the upper, into the upper extremity or into the head. So you can, you know, I palpate all the way down to T6, T7 area, um, and looking for any reproduction of symptoms. Okay, if if you're looking at the the lower part of the thoracic, with vague symptoms in the leg, so sometimes with thoracic pain. In the lower thoracic area, people come with these vague symptoms, heaviness in their leg. Um, definitely palpate the lower thoracic in that case with a, with a, a lumbar spine uh, patient. Okay. And then going through your unilaterals and doing your sweep of twos. So um, just to know that with the... So, do you want to sit up for this? Let me show you. With, with the thoracic spine, you know, some textbooks are a little bit differently, um, but the way I was taught that T1 to T3, the transverse process is usually on level with, with the uh, spinous process. As you start getting into the T4 area, the, the angle of the spinous process starts to change. So, around T4 to T6, the transverse process is about uh, one half the vertebrae below the spinous process from T4 to T6. As you go into T7 to about T9, it's about a full level below. So the only reason I mention that is, is that if when you're doing unilaterals, just know if, if you're in you know, the T7, T6 area and you're doing a unilateral, you're probably doing a unilateral PI in the transverse process below than the spinous process that you're at. Okay? So just, just to know that. And the same thing with centrals. It is still, somebody asks, well then, if you're doing a PA, aren't you affecting the level below? So if I'm doing it on T7, aren't I affecting T8? You are. But it's still a central. So you don't really angle it. You could, but it's still a PA. So T7 through T12, it's one level. I would say T7 
through T9, it's one level below. When you get to T10, it starts to go a half a level below. And then as you get into 11, 11 same thing, 12 is about the same level. So as you get into to, to T12, T11, T12. Okay? But I'm not, I'm not so worried, you know, it's just more for you guys to realize that, to realize where, where you are. Okay? But really, what I do is I, I feel, feel what feels stiff, what doesn't. Okay. All right. And then to get into the costa transverse is about two finger widths from the spinous process. And then you're going to palpate on the ribs to stress the costa transverse. So you're going to do and the same. The transverse processes are still about one finger width away. Yeah. And then you're just going to go down. Sweep the twos. You're going to have to change. So then I might come here and start doing my unilateral PAs on the transverse process. And then same thing on the other side. I'm going to go more pressure, going into threes and fours. I'm kind of feeling, comparing the other side. Do you have any problems up here? No. She okay. should. Um, so to, to get to the first rib, there are two ways you can do it. One way is to get a, uh, on top of a maybe posterior aspect of the upper trap and feeling for the first rib there. Or another way is to get anterior to the, to the upper trap. So you really want to kind of, you don't want to go through the upper trap. Why don't you guys come around and, and so you guys can see. So you don't want to do this because they're, they're you know, got some tender points in the upper trap naturally. We just have tender points in our muscles. So we don't want to go through that because that will pop the peak quite tender. Is that tender there? Kind of, yeah. yeah. So I want to go, so well, here's the upper trap. I'm going to go a little anterior and slacken up. And then I'm going to go and feel for the first rib. And you're feeling basically for bone. That's what you're going to feel for. And that's our first strip right there. Is that tender? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yep. Mm -hmm. Feel the other side. And so here, when I'm comparing both sides, I'm feeling for, you know, where, again, where does R1 come in? Does it feel further? Do I have to, can I sink my thumbs deeper to feel that R1 compared to this side? Okay. And then, or you can come more posterior and palpate it that way. Straight down. Straight down to the ground or straight yeah. down through her? Okay. Yeah, straight down. A little, little bit towards her feet. Okay. Yep. And then here, same thing, going to go a little towards her feet. Right. Okay. So you want to make sure when you're, when you're palpating for that, that her arms are up here because if they're here, it's going to make life a lot more difficult and the tension is going to, it's going to change. Which is not bad, but it definitely makes it light easier to, to feel for, for the first rib in this position because it softens everything up up top. Okay? All sensitive. And to uh, mobilize the ribs or, or feeling for the ribs as you come in the costo transverse area. So about two finger widths apart. What I like to do is use my hypothenar, stabilize the opposite side, and mobilizing kind of the ribs this way in this direction. So I can go you know, like around the second and third rib. I want to try to make sure if I can get her scap out of the way a little bit. And then mobilizing. 
So you're kind of pushing in an oblique with your um, left. Kind of, kind of going a little bit PA lateral. Kind of going okay. PA and then a little bit in the lateral direction. So kind of following a bit of the line of the rib. And your right hand is just pushing PA. My right hand is just stabilizing. My left hand is doing the PA. Is this part of every thoracic exam? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it should go under this. Ribs. So CT costal transverse area. So in, in in when I'm you know that's what you're using to assess the costal transverse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And two fingers from the spine. Yeah, I'd say about two fingers. Usually they're two finger widths. The the patients. So sometimes you know yours can be a bit bigger. So you want to use and. That's where you're going to get into more of the costo transverse area. Okay. All right. And so you just come along there. And then you're feeling for that mobility. Do they move more than the transverse processes? Or is it pretty much the same? I think there's there's more give with, with the ribs. There's a little bit more give. Yeah. They have to get greater. Yeah. Right yeah. You're going to feel a lot more give than doing this. Um, all right, do you guys want to practice that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more one. Yeah. What do you do if someone can't lie on their stomach? Oh, if they can't lie on their stomach? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could do, do it in sitting, you know. Um, you could have do it in sitting and just try and stabilize and kind of palpate that way and just mobilize in that direction. Yeah. Um, you could try sideline. That's a little bit tough. I mean, you could do sideline. I would say the first like T1 to T4, but when you get into here, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Right. But you could do you could do it in sitting. You know, you could you could extend them and try to mobilize, or rotate into and try to mobilize that way. So you could do it. Yeah. Those chair massage chairs would be helpful. That, that that's a good idea. Definitely. Yeah, sitting and leaning forward and mobilize that way. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay.